Okay guys, uh, Sergeant M here, and uh, what I'm doing is I am trying to sort out this external hard drive here. Um, I used this enclosure uh, about a week or so ago to scan and clean a laptop hard drive, and ever since I put this one back together, it's been giving me fits. doesn't want to read it, doesn't want to recognize it, <clears throat> so I'm investigating that, but I figured while I'm doing that would be a good time to show you um, exactly what an internal hard drive looks like, or excuse me, external hard drive. Um, pretty basic. Uh, I'll sh throw some pictures up here in a bit um, uh, of what the whole thing looks like together. Uh, but this is basically the internals. This is the guts. Uh, here you have your hard drive. And back here is our controller board. Uh, you can see right here we have the uh, Molex connector that provides your power and down in there we have a uh, IDE ribbon cable. Uh, it's really short in fact I'll try and do this one handed here pull this thing up <clears throat> you can see it's just your standard connections on any hard drive uh, that you'll find inside your computer. This one happens to be IDE. There are SATA, eSATA, solid state drives the whole works. This here is your uh, controller board. Basically, takes everything from the uh, external power source, which is back here, converts it to 12 volts for your hard drive, and also we have our uh, USB interface. So that's really about all there is to that. What I've done to this one, and you'll see in the pictures, is I have uh, taken and repainted it with some basic spray paint. <clears throat> um, looks pretty nasty, but I'm probably going to be changing that out, so no big deal. Um, this also started out life as an 80 gig external hard drive, and I've changed it to a 250 gig. As you can see, maybe. Uh, I don't think you're going to be able to see it anyway. It's right up here, 250 gigabytes, PATA 133. Okay, so another thing I've done to this guy is I replaced the stock, I think it was green and amber LEDs, uh, to show power and activity with blue and red uh, to match the uh, paint theme that I did on this. So. I'll flick this guy on and you can see the LEDs light up. I think it's pretty cool. You might also be able to hear the hard drive spinning up. I doubt it. It's pretty quiet. So, there we go. Alright, so now all I've done is I've disconnected the IDE ribbon cable and the power cable and there's the back of the hard drive with nothing connected to it. And just to show you, I'll grab another hard drive out of my drawer over here. My drawer of goodies. This is an old one here, but you can see, same thing, only difference is this one, you can see these white little jumper clips here. Now, normally there wouldn't be two of them on there, but one of those is extra, and that's a good place to store it. So, um, exactly the same on the back as far as the interface goes. No changes, nothing special. They're just taking a standard IDE hard drive and making a USB interface for it and putting it in an external enclosure. So, there you go. Um, obviously, if you have questions, uh, post on this thread or PM me and I'll answer them to the best of my abilities and all I'm going to do now I'm going to go and troubleshoot this thing and hopefully get it working again because this one stores all of my movies on it <clears throat> take all my uh, DVDs and they're all backed up uh, onto this hard drive so um, whenever I want to watch one I don't have to go get the disc I can just fire it up on the machine right there so uh, I'm going to go and troubleshoot this, hopefully get it working again so I can watch my movies 
and so now you guys are a little bit more educated as far as what an external hard drive looks like uh, when it's torn down. Uh, one more thing I should add. Um, do not attempt this unless uh, you know what you're doing, unless you've been into computers before and you've taken them apart or built them or fixed them or replaced parts or upgraded. Um, I wouldn't want you to go and attempt this and then fry something and say, hey, uh, Sergeant M, you told me to do this and then try and hold me liable. So um, attempt this at your own risk and only if you know what you're doing. Okay, so troubleshooting. Um, yeah, it wasn't working. Uh, still hooked up to the external enclosure, which is um, over here. So what I've done, and again, don't attempt this and let you unless you know exactly what you're doing. It's not good to leave these things dangle like that, but it's only going to be for a short period. So what I've done is taken the uh, ribbon off of the optical drive and the power off the optical drive, and I just took it down here and plugged it right into the uh, Maxter external drive. Um, now again, this is just a regular internal drive in an external enclosure. Um, this machine that I'm working on, it's an old, 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 Gateway Pentium 3 or something like that, 800 megahertz. Nice machine for uh, just checking things out. Keep it down here in the shop. I have some speakers connected to it. I can stream my uh, music over my uh, wireless network. <clears throat> and so that way I have some tunes down here in the shop because I don't have a radio or nothing down here. So um, Great machine just to kind of putz around with and you know, if I'm working on somebody else's computer, it's got an antivirus program on it. Um, you can hook it up to this and uh, scan it. Normally, if the drives are going to be there uh, for any extended period of time, I would not let them dangle here. I would somehow make sure that they were sitting down here. Of course, it would be sitting this way, so that way the control board underneath isn't making contact with anything else and shorting out the drive. So, as you might have just heard, Windows started up. And we're going to see if this thing is recognized internally. Oh, you guys might have also seen my thread about the uh, computer that was in my truck. Um, this is the same one. Uh, truck, for some reason right now, isn't working. So, while I'm investigating that, um, it's down here in the shop. Um, what this thing does when it starts up, it loads Media Player and Control MK, which is the program that I use to uh, take my Xbox controller and hook it up via uh, USB to the machine. So we're just going to close those out because I don't need them. Let's open up my computer. And you can see so far. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the only thing it shows is the floppy drive, which I don't even use anyway. <clears throat> Local disk drive C, which is what the computer's running off of, and my network drive, which is music on my machine in another room. So, I'm hoping to God that I didn't screw something up somehow when I took this drive out of its enclosure. And I hope I don't have a dead drive on my hands. That would suck. So, right now it's hooked up, <clears throat> excuse me, it's hooked up as a slave. Uh, there's no jumpers on the back. I'm going to try and change that out. Put a jumper on it. Tell it that it's the master on that IDE channel. And hopefully next time I boot up, it'll see it. 